So I'm sure that a lot of people are wondering why you would even need to insulate a basement. Where would heat loss occur? Julie, this is a popular misconception. People think that since the ground doesn't freeze, or at least from say four feet down below and lower, that there's very little heat loss there. That's really a misconception. Whenever there's a temperature difference between one area and the other, there's heat flow. We call this delta T, and the greater the temperature difference, the faster the heat flow. Insulation is something we put in between to slow that down. So mo these days, most people want to heat their basements, even in older houses, furnaces are often in the basement. It is heated space. So here you can see an uninsulated concrete foundation. It's probably the most common type of foundation in the province. Uh, in houses that are 20, 30, 40 years old, and brand new houses today. And even some of the new houses are uninsulated. So what's happening here? If you remember from last week, we talked a little bit about heat loss. Whenever there's a temperature difference, there's heat flow. When we're heating our house, it's fairly warm in the house. Most people use their basements these days. Even if they don't, it's still well above the ground temperature or the temperature outside. Because remember, the top part of the wall is usually exposed to outside temperatures. So we've got temperatures in here anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees. The soil outside is going to be from below freezing near the ground to maybe five or six degrees at the bottom of the wall, down at the, what we call the footing level. Hmm. So there's a pretty significant temperature difference, and in that case, there's always going to be heat flow. Sometimes that's not insulated, and sometimes there's a lot of air leakage at that connection, so top of the foundation wall. Other air leakage paths in basements can be old doors, around windows, uh, flue pipes, Anything that is a pathway for air leakage is also going to be heat loss. So we've got three things to look at there. The wood frame part, the stone or, or concrete part, and the air leakage paths. And when you think of it, with most of the rest of the house insulated, even, even if it's only poorly insulated against heat loss, an uninsulated basement now starts to become one of the major heat loss places in most houses. 25 to 30 percent of the annual heat loss is not uncommon through basements. Wow. So it seems like basements are a really important thing to have insulated in your house. They're definitely important, but because they're in the ground, they pose all kinds of problems and challenges when you're trying to control moisture issues down here that could lead to deterioration or mold. Well, the first thing we have to do is really kind of assess what we've got to start with. You know, what's the generation of foundation that we're looking at? Is it an old stone foundation? Is it a concrete block foundation? That was kind of the next generation that came in. Uh, or is it poured concrete? Those are three different generations. We run into all of them, and they all have different challenges. In addition to that, the question will also come up whether we want to insulate from the inside, and there's a few different techniques we can use there, or whether we want to insulate from the outside. Before we do any of that, it's very important to understand if we've got any moisture issues, any moisture migrating from the ground into the foundation that can cause us potential problems. Now, how do we know when we've got too much moisture in a basement? Julie, this is really probably one of the most challenging assessments, uh, judgment calls that people have to make. And when I'm talking to contractors or the public about this, I kind of bracket the situation. The old stone foundations, we know that we've got moisture coming through. They weren't built watertight, they weren't built with damp proofing or drain tile. They're in direct contact with soil, there's moisture coming through, no question. You, it might not look like it to you because it's evaporating and drying to the inside, but if we build anything on top of that that traps that moisture in there, uh, anything that contains fiber insulation or wood, we're running the risk that we're going to have some rot and deterioration there. Are there stains on the walls? Are there cracks, stains on the floors? Do we have white powder on the wall, which is indicative of moisture moving through the foundation, evaporating and leaving some of the salts and calcium deposits from the minerals that are in the concrete? So we've got to answer those questions. We've got to use techniques that will actually allow us to control and manage moisture in basements.